A lengthy police chase and shootout ended in tragedy this week when alleged kidnapping victim 15-year-old Savannah Graziano was shot and killed as she ran toward the officers. So here's what we know. Officials in California issued an amber alert for Savannah as a missing person this Monday after her father, Anthony Graziano, allegedly murdered her mother, Savannah's mother, and then fled with the teen in his car. According to the police, Anthony, who was also killed in the shootout, began firing at deputies during a high-speed car chase. Amidst a barrage of gunfire, the vehicle in question stopped and then Savannah emerged from the passenger side wearing a helmet and tactical gear, allegedly. She was shot and killed while running toward the police. Now, deputies say they failed to identify the five foot two figure as Savannah until they began to provide medical assistance to her. Officials have yet to confirm who actually shot the girl. On Wednesday, police shockingly claimed that Savannah participated in the gunfight and had actually shot at the police. However, a preliminary report produced by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office finds only one gun was retrieved at the scene, a rifle found inside the car where Anthony was shot and killed. Joining us now to weigh in is New York Public Defender for Legal Aid and political commentator, Alayami Aluren. So great to see you this morning, Alayami. Thank you for having me, y'all. So this is something that I know you have complained about uh, when we've had discussions about police incidents. You've pointed out uh, cases where the police have claimed that they shot in self-defense or they were shot at first, so that's how they had to respond. But as you point out, that's often not the case, or it turns out later that um, there, there was no weapon or there was not a weapon in the possession of the person who, purported to, who it's purported to have fired it, and that seems to be the case here. Exactly. That's the same thing here. You know, it's unfortunate that the police engage in this kind of negligence routinely. And I wish I could say I was shocked, but I'm not. The police admit to shooting and killing over 1,045 people each year. So does it shock me that the police would shoot and kill this girl? No, but it's so unfortunate because when you talk to people about the, the case of police brutality and what's happening with police in this country, the response is always, well, what do we do without police? What happens in these kind of incidents? And it's like, well, look at what happens. This is what the police interference is, right? You have a girl that's been kidnapped by her father, and instead of safely getting this girl back to the family, what they do is they don't just shoot and kill the father. That's one thing, neither here nor there, but they know that little girl was unarmed. You know exactly who you're looking for. You notice this is a 15-year-old girl. You know it, and yet they shoot her to death, and they don't just, it's not even an apology. It's not even remorseful for the actions. The immediate, immediate response is what you see them do in every case of police brutality is vilify the victim. Immediately, it's, oh, she was participating in the shootout. Oh, we didn't know if she was unarmed. We didn't know if she was armed. You did know. Your entire task was to go and rescue this little girl. And instead, her assuming, because she's taught, like everybody else in the society, to believe the police are there to help her. She runs towards the police and they shoot her to death. And their response is vilify the child that was supposedly the victim that they were going after. It's unacceptable, but it's not uncommon. And that's the greater problem. Right, because this was a very dangerous situation. I mean, they, they, the, uh, the, the kidnapper, the, the alleged kidnapper, the father, uh, you know, did did shoot at them. It was a high-speed car chase. So it was a, a dangerous situation, a situation that I think probably most people think, yeah, this this is this is what the police are there for. This is what they're supposed to do. And and neutralizing um, the father was probably well within a justified situation. But they're there. They're supposed to. <laughs> their point, the very point, is to rescue that girl. And for them to have, it's it, it is by it, it like it is de facto negligent. Like it, it just is negligent right. because they were supposed to rescue her. Right, and we keep not, we just keep allowing these kinds of things to happen. If we remember, what well, maybe a year ago, two years ago with the UPS driver where the jewels were stolen and the police went in a shootout for the jewels, shot up the entire UPS truck and killed the UPS driver who was the victim that they were supposedly supposed to be rescuing. They do this. Why do we need this response? If we say violence doesn't help things, we, uh, we wouldn't allow civilians to go and approach our problem. Like, we wouldn't have allowed someone to go and follow the father and age in a shootout, do all of this, and then kill the victim because they were trying to do this and they got into it in a shootout. We wouldn't, but yet with the police, we allow this. We have situations that are bad and we allow the police to come in and make it worse. And then we just say, what? What now? Because this is unacceptable and it's not routine and we don't even, it's not even, it's not new. We've seen these kinds of things happen before and there's no real response to prevent it from happening. There's no real condemnation of the police departments. Instead, we see what we always get and the, the beginnings of a massive cover up, excuses, explanations for why they did something that was just quite frankly unacceptable. And there's no larger discussion as to how they end up here. Why is the police response to be so trigger happy? If you're supposed to be trying to rescue this girl, why is the main focus when you see the child emerge from the car to shoot her to death? Why? Why? Right.
because I'm sure many people would say to themselves, okay, if I, I find out that, you know, a, a girl, my neighbor or something, um, her, her mother's been killed, she's missing, or I, I know that she's missing, she's been kidnapped, that generates the Amber Alert, and people are just doing what they think is the right thing to do. <laughs> you know, you're supposed right. to call the police in a situation like this, and to have that, you know, result in... In the massacre in, of a family. Right, right, is just... The whole uh, family's dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 the unfortunate part that we need to remember, right? If we look at the police is the police is supposed to stop crime, prevent crime, maybe harm, reduce it, right? In this scenario, a woman is killed by her husband, her child is kidnapped, and what did the police come in and do? Make sure that those two people are dead too. The child is dead. Like how did they they didn't better it, they didn't reduce it, they in fact just made a bad situation worse, and there's no apology, there's no explanation, there's no declaration to do better, there's no um, inspection or, or reflection on what they did or what could have been done differently. No, it's just immediately, let's engage in how we blame the victim for, for her own murder. Hmm, yeah. What happens now, you know, walk us through, because you're more of an expert on how these things go, what does an investigation look like at this point? And do you expect, you know, the police department to just kind of you know, make, continue to find excuses like the one they made that, oh, well, she was armed, so we had no choice? They're going to say they're going to say they're conducting an investigation and then after a while we're not going to hear about it so much. And the next thing we're going to hear is that the prosecutors declined to to bring charges because, you know, they're going to blame it on the father and say the police in this incident, you know, they didn't really know. They're going to come up with that and they're just going to quietly brush it under the rug, just like they did with the UPS driver and every other case that we ever hear about like this, unfortunately. If they don't discipline police officers who make egregiously wrong calls that result in innocent lives being taken, even in situations that I, I think the vast majority of people would, would say that, yeah, this situation is one that does call ideally for the police. So if they don't take responsibility when they get it raw, this wrong in situations like this, aren't they just, isn't it the police themselves who are kind of, you know, playing into the idea, well, what, what good are the police? Or making, people, making yes. people more reluctant to call them in situations where they really are necessary. They are making the case. What we constantly say to people is police do not stop or prevent crime. Whenever we talk about, you know, abolishing the criminal system or why we need to defund the police or any of these things, the answer is the police do not do what we think they do. They simply don't, and they do it ineffectively. Police solve maybe less than 2% of crime in America. They certainly don't stop it. They don't prevent it. They respond. They respond to crime. They respond to situations, and they often respond worse. They often exacerbate and worsen situations that are already underway. And the problem with stuff like this is whenever you want to have these conversations and people want to back you know, bad apple it. They're just occasional bad officers. If they were, let's say, let's say that's the case and it's not the entire problem is not with policing. We just have a lot of bad actors that are engaged in constant police brutality to do incidents like this. What does it say if the police departments themselves cover for those people? If they say, no, they're not bad apples, this is okay, this is acceptable, which is what they continue to tell us. So if they say that this is not a problem, this is not, you know, an outlier, this is not a reflection of individual bad cops, but in fact, this behavior is acceptable and we, the victims or the people that are being killed are the ones that are wrong. What does this say about our policing system and what will continue to happen? Hmm. Well, Olaimi, thank you so much for joining us to discuss this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robbie. Always a pleasure. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll dig into the latest data on how Hispanic voters are leaning ahead of the midterms. And please be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any of our content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And I'll see you all back here tomorrow.